just uh, getting started with our Instagram live here with our 2021 uh, stoneware glaze release. I'm going to go over all sorts of different details today. We're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be going over our brand new labels as well as all these different performance characteristics with our brand new 2021 glazes. Um, we know that all of you guys have been waiting very, very patiently, so thank you so much for your patience. I know that we've been building up a lot of enthusiasm for these products. They, they have started to be bottled as well as their sample kits, so you can expect to see your sample kits out in the market um, by the end of next week. So those will be out and available for purchase and then all of our pints and dry glazes will be available by the beginning of in the beginning of April. So thanks so much for waiting so patiently for these glazes guys. We really appreciate you and we cannot wait to see what you guys do with all of them. But to start what we're going to do is tell you everything that these glazes do. So if you haven't already, we did do some glaze profiles for all of these glazes, doing the ins and outs of different performance characteristics. So that gets like a little bit more technical with product testing. I am going to go over a variety of tests here. I'm going to be talking about our cone 6 results performance, our cone 10 reduction performance, as well as showcasing some flux and using these glazes in combination. So that's kind of the general overview of what we're going to be talking about today. And without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. It looks like a lot of people are popping in here, so thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Um, so to start, actually, I just want to go over our new label design. So these new stonework glazes, these are going to have our brand new label design, which is so, so awesome. We have it here. Sorry if it's backwards for you guys. So this is an awesome label, but I want to go over some things that you can use the label for to help you when you have these glazes. So to start with this new label here, we have our beautiful tile here. This is the tile that's going to be going on our chip chart. And this is going to be on a uh, fire to cone six on a white stoneware clay body. So this will just kind of be what we consider to be a standard. So any variation with clay body, firing temperature, and even application can vary in performance to this. So always keep that in mind and we do always recommend to test. But just so you know, this is on a cone six white stoneware clay body. And we've got the glaze number and name. And then down here is the recommended firing range. So here we have a recommended range from cone five up to cone 10. And that is not to say that the performance will be the same from cone 5 to cone 10. Of course, there will be variation. As I said previously, this is our standard a cone 6 on a white stonework clay body. Anything varying from that will produce different results. We do have our cone 6 and cone 10 reduction results on the other side of the label here, as well as available. We have photographs available on our website, so you can get a visual for those there. And so then we'll go over to this side here. So this side is going to be kind of probably, well, actually all of it's really, really helpful, but this will be kind of like what we get a lot of questions about. So we get a lot of questions in regard to dinnerware safety and not as many questions in regard to our ACMI seal. But just so you know, our ACMI seal is in regards to the wet fire or the wet glaze. And so that is the AP seal ensures that it doesn't have anything toxic or harmful to people in it. We do have one uh, of this release that has a CL label. So we only have an AP and CL option for these labels. And the CL label is basically saying that there is soluble copper in this glaze and that it is not recommended for school age children. So children in elementary school, 10 and below, should not be using this wet glaze. Um, so that's what that's for, but it's not harmful to anyone above that age. So if you're above the age of 10, it's not really anything that you have to worry about. So then here we have the dinnerware safe logo. So all of our glazes moving forward, we're gonna be doing a rolling change with our old glazes to get these new labels. It's caused a bit of confusion in the past that 
we don't have this denoted on some of our labels. So now it is going to be on all of our labels moving forward. If you see this new design, it will be on there. And um, all the four glazes from this glaze release, so we have Rainforest, Azurite, Himalayan Salt, and Landslide. These are considered not to be dinnerware safe. And that is because the fired and glazed surface is not chemically durable. So long exposure to highly acidic foods would cause the surface to degrade. And that is not ideal for surfaces that are coming into contact with food, of course. So this is something that you might want to make sure to use maybe on the outside of a piece if you really like it and it's not going to come into contact with food or anything that could possibly degrade the surface. That is good to go, but you don't want it on anywhere that is going to directly come into contact with food. And then the third really important thing on this side of the label is going to be the lot number. So here's where you'd find the lot number. And that would be our first question we're gonna ask for when we do any technical reporting or anything like that. And that's how we're going to keep track of lots to ensure that we have consistent performance and that it's performing up to standards. So it's really helpful for us for troubleshooting any, any technical issues that are happening with our products. And then on this side here, we have all of the information here. So we have our cone six results, our cone 10 reduction results and a description, basic application instructions. So that's gonna talk about the firing temperatures, which is labeled both in Fahrenheit and Celsius, as well as how many coats we recommend to apply to achieve these results. Um, all of our, most of our glazes, we just do three coats on everything. So when it says two to three coats, that's taking into account that people have different hands when they're glazing. So some people can do two really heavy coats and it's the same as three coats. But ultimately, just like three coats is what we do as kind of an average. And then we have our suggestions and tips here. And for these, the, the uh, Rainforest, Azurite, Himalayan Salt, and Landslide, those four glazes from this release, um, we kind of consider those all to be like sister glazes, so they're all very similar in performance because they have the same base glaze, but they are different colors. So it's kind of nice for that, so if you like the way one performs or understand how one of those perform, then you can kind of like have that for across the board. And then also here we mention about matte glazes, all of our matte glazes, we do recommend a cone 6 firing to get this smooth satin matte finish and then any safety information is denoted there so that's kind of a general overview for our new label design and hopefully when you guys get these you'll know exactly where to look so i'm gonna go see it looks like a couple people did ask some questions i'll see if i can see any of them here we said can you please quickly identify which cone six body? Um, the, for this tile, the cone six body that we're using, Mako makes a stoneware casting slip. So that is what we use, Mako's white stoneware casting slip for those tiles. Why are they not for dishes? Uh, so these are not recommended for dinnerware because they do not have a chemically durable finish, which actually will be denoted on the label in the safety information. So long exposure to highly acidic foods will degrade the fired finish. So we don't recommend that on anywhere that's gonna come directly into contact with food. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just go over some general information. Um, first, actually, I'll just talk about food safe and dinnerware safe since we're kind of on the subject anyways and then I'll go through all sorts of firing results and samples for you guys. So when it comes to food safe and dinnerware safe there can be some confusion in the industry because it's not really a regulated terminology but when you're using Mako products when we talk about food safe we're talking about testing that we have done that is testing the leaching of lead and cadmium from a fired and glazed surface. So technically all of our stoneware glazes meet the standards to be qualified and labeled as food safe glazes. But keeping that in mind, not all of them are really ideal as surfaces to eat on. 
So that's when we kind of decided to distinguish between our food safe and dinnerware safe labeling because we technically can label all of our glazes as food safe, but we did want to bring some practical consideration into your glaze use and denote the actual dinnerware safe and whether we recommend them for dinnerware as well. So there's two things that in our glaze line that we deem things as not dinnerware safe for, and that's either going to be adverse surface characteristics or surface textures and uh, the lacking of chemical durability. So I kind of went into this a bit um, when I was talking about the label, but so adverse textures would be really, really deep uh, textured crazing or magma glazes. Those glazes are going to fall apart if you're going to be washing them or something like that. Um, our uh, mud crack glazes, those have a, a really heavy texture and aren't always used over another glaze. So that is something that we deem as not being suitable for dinnerware due to the surface characteristics. And then alternatively, in our regular stoneware glaze line, we do have a handful of glazes that we deem not dinnerware safe due to surf or the chemical durability of the surface. So that's going to be something that the chemical composition of the fired finish will degrade if it's exposed to acidic foods for a period of time or repeatedly. So those glazes would include our uh, mirror black, our satin patina, our antique brass, and then the four glazes from our new release we have rainforest, azurite, Himalayan salt, and landslide. So all four of those including all four of the new ones and then the three previous ones that I've mentioned, those will degrade when exposed to highly acidic foods. So that kind of goes into the food safe and dinnerware safe testing. Um, in regards to these new glazes, so we understand that a lot of you guys are upset. We deem them not dinnerware safe. We have done a bit of testing when it comes to layering the new glazes to see if it seals the surface for dinnerware as well as just using them on the outside of the piece. So we did do some testing in-house where we layered a clear glaze over top of our new stoneware glazes and it actually did not end up sealing the surface. So I do have a sample here that kind of showcases it. So since these glazes are so mobile, the clear glaze just kind of melts down to the bottom and then that leaves this area exposed with the glaze. So the clear glaze doesn't really seal the surface necessarily because it moves down. So you're always going to end up having this exposed area. So we can't guarantee that layering other glazes with these would seal it for exposure for dinnerware. But alternatively, we can recommend that you use these on areas of a piece that don't directly come into contact with food because the acid is what's going to be degrading the surface. So if it's just on the outside of something that's not coming into contact with highly acidic surfaces, then you're totally fine. So here is an example of using Himalayan salt in a combination in a safe area on a dinnerware surface. So this isn't going to be coming into contact with any food. And then I, alternatively, I'm also not going to be drinking off of this or ingesting anything that comes into contact with this surface. So that's kind of the runaround as to how you can use these on functional pieces because we know a lot of potters are making functional wear and you don't want to exclusively make decorative pieces all of the time. Um, I think I have another question here. Can SW406 and 405 magma be fired to cone 06 and still have big lava crater effects? Unfortunately, they cannot be fired to a lower temperature to achieve these effects. The glaze is actually just not going to even melt or mature at all at that temperature. If you fired it at like that, it would honestly probably look really smooth, just like a dry, unfired glaze, unfortunately. So we don't have anything like that in the low fire glaze line actually either. So sorry. All right. So now we're gonna get into the fun stuff. I've got some samples to show you guys. So I'm not, I'm gonna act like none of you guys have ever seen these glazes before. So sorry if I'm repeating a lot of stuff, but I do really like to kind of have a discussion about the performance characteristics and kind of how we analyze our test tiles because I think it helps 
you guys understand kind of where we're coming from and giving you a better understanding of ceramics in general. So here is our first glaze. We have rainforest here. So on this tile, I have one, two, and three coats. This was fired on that white stoneware Mako slip cast body and fired to cone six. You can see here, this glaze breaks really, really well over texture. We've got this lovely brown, and then this texture creates a lot of variation in the color going on here. And down here, after three coats, we did get a little smidge of our pooling. So that really nice gloss effect there. And that's kind of from the texture gathering glaze in one area and then making a stripe. So I did want to kind of showcase the difference between it on a flat textured surface. So here we've got it on a flat textured surface. I'm not sure what's focusing here. So we've got a flat textured surface and then we have a vertical textured surface. So that, that beautiful dark gloss really needs to have some good texture to showcase itself. Kind of like on these guys, we've got these really deep ridges and that's where we get our glazes to um, showcase their soul, the, their, um, the variation in the finish. And then here we have our rainforest glaze. So this is rainforest, one, two, and three coats, fired to cone six. And so this glaze also breaks really well over texture, showcases a nice uh, brown that it's breaking. And then here is it just on a flat surface, that beautiful blue. So if you don't have any texture on your piece, you're gonna be getting a nice blue matte and around the bottom it might gather with some of that gloss. So then here I've got the flat tile. So this really showcases that variation in the finish really, really well. And this is gonna be the same for Rainforest, Azurite, Himalayan Salt, and Landslide. Like I said, they all are very similar in performance. So next I have Himalayan Salt. So Himalayan Salt is a really, really cool glaze, but it is gonna produce a lot of variation that happens. So we have one, two, and three coats here. So again, this breaks really well over texture. On an untextured surface, you get pretty, pretty uniform and homogeneous colors. But this glaze, I'm not sure if you can see it here, we have it on this tile. This glaze has a lot of different characteristics, I guess is the best way to put it. So this result here, we got a lot of pink, but you alternatively can get a lot of orange or on this tile here and our samples that we posted on the label, those are going to have like a modeling, really even variation of the blue, or no, sorry, not the blue, the pink the orange, and then we get that beautiful gloss pooling. So sorry it doesn't translate super well on the video, but definitely check out photos from our website to get a really, really good look at this glaze because the live videos just do not seem to do it justice. And then next here, we have our landslide glaze. So one, two, and three coats. This one breaks well over texture, but it just, just still kind of breaks a brown just like the other ones, but since the colors in it are brown, it's not producing quite as much contrast as, as those. But it still does break well over texture, creates a lot of variation where the texture happens. And then on the back here, we have it on a smooth surface, nice smooth satin mat that's pulling glossy on the bottom. And then we have our flat version here. Sorry, the camera I know is not focusing. I'm not sure why. Or maybe I just can't see. So those are the two different versions of that. And then finally we have Cenote. So Cenote is the one glaze of the stoneware release that is recommended for dinnerware. Totally safe. You don't have to do any fancy combinations or put it on a certain or part of the piece for it to be safe. This one is good to go. So here we have Cenote one, two, and three coats. Cenote has Norris Blue as the base glaze. So if you like the way Norris Blue performs, then you might really like the way Cenote performs because it's going to be very similar, except it does add a bit of variation with these crystals. They really, really melt nicely into the base glaze and add some nice movement without too much pooling. So that's kind of nice 
it looks like it's really mobile, but it's not so mobile that it's like pooling down at the bottom. And then here we have alternatively, it fired flat, just to showcase kind of how the crystals perform a little bit different. So if you have something that's not super vertical, you can definitely expect more speckling and less of this like melted ice cream looking um, <laughs> texture here. So that kind of goes over just like the general showcasing of our stoneware glazes, our brand new stoneware glazes. Again, these were on a white stoneware slip cast body. Mako makes a white stoneware slip, and that is what we make all of our test tiles with, as well as our chip chart tiles and everything like that. It's blue winter wood. Yes, you're actually right. The crystals are the same as winter wood and sandstone, actually. So we took everyone's favorite crystals and everyone's favorite base glaze and put it together and it really turned out really, really magical. We're really, really excited about this glaze and it looks so nice in combinations. So we're excited that everyone's excited about that. I'm gonna scroll, there's a couple, I saw a couple questions. Can you order these new glazes in Canada? If so, where? Um, yes, you can. Uh, they're not available yet. The stoneware sample packs will be available by the end of next week. But if you go to our website and actually just scroll down to the bottom, there's a button that says distributors, and that's where you would search for your closest Mako distributor. That's how you know who you want to buy from. We have them kind of spread out throughout Canada, so you might want to find the one closest to you on our website. Is it going to be available in dry version? Definitely going to be available and dry. Both our 16 ounce brushing pints and our five pound dries will be available in the beginning of April. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, all right, so here we're gonna go into our cone 10 results. And then, let's see. And then I was gonna go over flux and then do our different combinations just touching on that so if you don't want to see the flux or if you want to see the flux let me know or if you don't want to see it then let me know I guess and I'll skip over that part but I'm excited to showcase these with all of these different things so I'm just gonna go through it so here we have oh this one's so nice I'll do a comparison of the cone 6 and cone 10 because I love it so here we have our cone 10 results of rainforest this is beautiful. It's a nice soft matte still, and you have these nice metallic blooms that happen on the surface, which is really, really great. Oh, and then compared to the cone six. So that's solid coverage, and this texture kind of makes it look a little bit different, but I want to show you full three coats. And then here we have our um, azurite. So here is azurite. Again, we get these beautiful micro crystals on it. These ones aren't quite metallic. It's like a light blue bloom that's happening. And this one I really, really like at cone 10 because it starts breaking green. So at cone 6, you can see here it's kind of a brownish green that it breaks. But when you get up to cone 10, it turns to this beautiful beautiful rich forest green color. So this one is so nice. The finish is still nice and smooth and the cone 10 and the added heat work really doesn't add a way more mobility. So you can see it does make it a bit more mobile. So we have three coats on both sides here, but it's not like it's running off the piece or anything like that. So these are awesome at cone 10. They're just pretty predictable and safe, safe to be using at that temperature and not having to worry about too much mobility. And the third glaze, we have Himalayan salt. Here we have our cone 10 performance. This one I'm so excited about because it totally blows my mind that it looks like this. So here it is our Himalayan salt fired in a cone 10 reduction. We get this beautiful opaque gray color that turns into a nice cream where it's heavier. And then the best part is this beautiful purple and blue gloss so if this was, I don't have any flat samples here, but if this was a flat sample, then in all of these areas where it would pool, you'd get this gorgeous blue purple, which I'm a huge sucker for. So maybe I'm a little bit biased. So here we have our comparison, our cone six and cone 10. Like, look at that change. That's so cool. I just love that. 
So awesome. So I'm really excited to see what all you Cone 10 people do with these guys, as well as our Cone 6 and really everyone else. I love seeing all the different things that people come up with because everyone has such a unique process, so everything looks a little bit different, which is the fun part. And here we have a landslide. Here's landslide and a Cone 10 reduction. Three coats. This one produces some beautiful variation. I love when it's brought up to this temperature, you get the highs and the lows, kind of. So we have nice gray charcoal, some bright golds, as well as brown. It breaks great over texture, a beautiful smooth finish. And then here we have a comparison for our Cone 6. So this one doesn't really change that much, aside from perhaps producing a bit more color variation. So here we can actually compare one, two, and three coats if it, it kind of doesn't work very well because of the texture. But yeah, so one, two, and three, and one, two, and three. So this one has a lot more brightness and variation. And then finally, the last Cone 10 result that I'm going to show you today is our Cenote. So Cenote doesn't actually change too much. It gets a bit darker. And then... The crystals don't move way more. We're not getting a lot of pooling. So really just the cone 10 reduction just turns it to this kind of gray, darker purple color. And then here we have the comparison for the cone six. So nice and bright at cone six and cone 10 reduction, it gets a little bit darker. Okay, so we have gone over our cone six with one, two, and three coats, our cone 10 reduction. And just so you guys know, I know I said it earlier, but we do have all of these results posted on our website. So if you need a refresher and want to see what they look like at cone, well, cone six is what we kind of promote everything at, but cone 10 reduction, that is available on our website. We don't have cone five results on our website or anything like that, but I do go over what it looks like cone five in the individual glaze profile videos. Um, to be honest, they don't really change that much. The surface is a little bit drier, but otherwise uh, they look pretty similar. Okay, so now we're going to go over the flux and then I would love to go through some combinations talking about the difference between flat and vertical combinations, how to use these on dinnerware surfaces, as well as dealing with a highly mobile glaze when you're layering it. And then also talking about layering our stoneware glazes with low fire glazes. So that's coming up after I talk about the flux performance at cone six with these guys. I'll check for a couple more questions really quick to see if I can answer any of them. All right, so anybody asking about if we can get glazes to certain areas, if you just check our website, we have a searchable distributor page we don't sell anything directly. We sell everything through a worldwide network of distributors. So that is who you need to contact to get our products where you're at. If you look up your closest Mako distributor, see if they'll ship it to you or something like that. Actually today, this morning, I posted about our searchable distributor page on our website. So if you go to www.makocolors.com, scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, and then you'll have a distributor button. Click on that button, and it'll link you to your closest Mako distributor. And these uh, these these glazes will be available, you know, in enough time to ship across the world. So we're hoping to ship them out very soon, and hopefully we can get them to you guys all as soon as possible. So thank you so much for being patient. We really, really appreciate you all. So, yep, so yeah, most of the questions I got here are just about distributors. Does Mako make some sort of powder or something that I could add to low fire glazes? Um, not that I know of, there's definitely probably products you can add to it, but Mako doesn't make anything like that. All right. Wow, everyone's so nice. Thank you guys so much for all of the compliments. Again, any distributor questions, please check our website. We have a distributor page on there and that will list them 
Unfortunately, I don't know them off the top of my head to answer all of your questions about uh, where our distributors are, but all that is available on our website. So thanks so much. And on with the flux. So here we have our flux layered with our different new stonework glazes. Here we have flux under the rainforest glaze. So I am really interested in using these glazes in combination because it's like, it doesn't get glossy where you think it'll be glossy and then it does get glossy where you didn't think it would. It's just kind of, you can never really predict the finish, I guess is kind of what I'm trying to say here. So here we have light flux and we have dark flux. I applied two coats of flux and about, you know, a one inch band on the top of light flux here, dark flux here. And then I applied three coats of rainforest on top of this. This is fired to cone six. So it does add a nice amount of mobility. It seems like as soon as you layer these glazes with any other glaze, they really, really get mobile. So when you start layering these in combinations, that is something that you're going to have to account for. So these test tiles are nice because they have this really blank space. If you're testing on your own clay body, I might recommend, maybe if you don't have a catch right here, maybe just do the top half of the tile so you have space for that mobility. So this is flux underneath the rainforest and then here we have flux over the rainforest so there is a bit difference in performance here mostly because this texture creates a lot of variation so just keep that in mind but and here it just kind of lightens or darkens the glaze so here we have light flux and dark flux applied over rainforest so rainforest three coats of rainforest first two coats of flux on the top inch and this kind of seamlessly blends because this glaze is very mobile. All right, and here we have a uh, azurite. So here we got azurite with flux underneath it. So again, two coats of flux first, then three coats of azurite on top. I did the flux about the top inch and then fired this to cone six. And you can see again, this sweet variation in performance. I love that contrast that happens there. And then here we have flux over. And here, see what I did here is I receded the coats on these because I knew that they were going to be mobile. So I did one coat all the way down to the bottom of the rainforest. So uh, first I did the rainforest. So I did one coat, two coats, stopped it a little earlier. And then three coats, I stopped it way up because I knew it was going to go down really far. And then I did two coats of flux, maybe an inch band at the top. And so that's a really nice way to kind of account for mobility, but still have your whole entire piece glazed. And I did that on all four of these new glazes. Or actually, I did it on all of these glazes because I was using flux. So flux adds a lot of mobility to most glazes. So... When I do testing with them, I like to recede the coats just to ensure that I'm not firing the tile to the shelf. And next here we have uh, Himalayan salt. So Himalayan salt does some nice things in combo. So again, we have flux underneath. So two coats of flux first, then three coats of Himalayan salt on top of this, receding the coats. And then this was just fired to cone six. So this also has that lovely contrast. And then on this side, we have the flux over. So again, receiving the coats and then flux on top. So it seems like when we put the flux on top, we don't create as much of the contrast in the finish. So that could be one of two things. It could be just because it's on the smooth side of the tile. So on this side, we have that gloss because the glaze is pooling in that texture. So maybe it's glossy because it's thick, or maybe it's glossy because the flux is underneath it. I don't know. We should have to do some more tests. And then on this side, it's not as glossy because there's no area for it to pool. There is a bit of gloss at the bottom, and that's about it. So this tile showcases the variation in the glaze really well. We get that nice beautiful pink and then this rutile kind of burnt orange gathering at the bottom. Um, that's kind of characteristic like where there's mobility you're going to have a concentration of this orange near the bottom which I really really like. But I just love this like blooming that happens all over the surface. This tile seems to be better on the video. At least to me it looks like it. So that is Himalayan salt. 
Next we have landslide, well, landslide with flux. So here we have two coats uh, of flux underneath the landslide. Again, we have that beautiful contrast and this variation. This variation again is occurring because this texture is making the glaze run in different areas. So if it's on a smoother surface, you would expect something more like this. And this is the flux over the landslide. Again, if anyone's just joining us, this is on a white stonework clay body and fired to cone six. We're doing the flux with our new glazes. I'm just showcasing some samples. And if you missed any of these samples that I'm showcasing, please check out our glaze profile videos on our YouTube channel. That is going to actually showcase all of these samples as well as alternative clay bodies. So if you want to see different clay bodies too, definitely check that out. And then next we have our cenote. So here we have cenote underneath the, whoa, flux underneath cenote. Sorry. So this one I did receive the coats as well because, again, flux adds, adds a lot of mobility. So here's light flux and dark flux. So dark flux looks a little bit more blue here. Sometimes it adds a bit of more of a brown color. So it just depends on what glaze you're layering it with as to whether uh, what color it changes to. And then on this side, we have flux over the cenote. So the color really doesn't change that much whether it's over or under. But on some glazes, it will make a difference. So it really just depends on what glaze you're using it with. All right, that is goes over a variety of firing results with our new glazes. And I'm gonna scroll here and see if we have any more questions. So thanks so much for being patient, guys. I really appreciate your time. Um, let's see, we have someone talking about our stoneware bowls. Um, yeah, we have a production issue with getting those out, so we're just waiting for our producer to keep up with the demand. They are in a really high demand. They take a long time to produce, so nobody's lying to you about them not being ready or holding out on you. So thanks so much for being patient with our uh, stoneware bisque pieces, everybody. Does applying the flux under usually make stoneware glazes run better? I usually put it over, but I like the under so much better. Uh, it really just depends on what glaze uh, you're using it with. Some glazes that already have a bit of mobility, it doesn't really matter if you put it over or under. So literally all these glazes I just showed you actually is a great example. So since these glazes move so much, when they already move and the flux moves, they kind of mix together. But let's say you did it on something that doesn't have a lot of mobility, like our ice glaze line. So those glazes, adding the flux underneath does produce a lot more mobility. So in that instance, actually, sometimes you'll have like, let's say I applied the flux in a band like this, since it's moving the glaze that's on top of it, like this little square will be almost like a clear glaze because it's moving all the glaze down. So sometimes if a glaze is really stiff, it's kind of nicer to have it over top of it so you don't get that block. But again, it really most things depend on what glaze you're layering it with more than the way that you're layering it. I'll probably eat my words later on that one, but for the most part, what you're layering it with is going to influence it a lot more. So thanks for that question. That was great. I hope I helped you out with that. Uh, when you use flux under, do you do full coverage and then reduce the glaze height? Um, when you do flux under, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. If you're talking about receding the coats, um, I just do rece I receive the coats for any testing that I do with flux so I can understand how it performs. And then once I've done my testing, I know whether I need to recede the coats moving forward or whether I can do full coverage in that instance. So hopefully I answered that question. If not, please comment again and we'll get some clarification. Hi, Agnes. Nice to see you. <laughs> uh, all right. So thanks so much, everybody. I really appreciate your time today. We're going to keep going with this live marathon that we have here. So thanks for staying tuned in. We really appreciate your time. 
So now I'm going to go over glaze combinations with our new glazes. Um, first, I'm going to talk about using them on dinnerware. So here I have three of our new glazes on a dinnerware surface. So this is kind of how you would want to go about glazing a dinnerware surface with this glaze. So like I said earlier, if you guys missed it, if you do want to apply this to dinnerware, you want to put it on somewhere that's not going to come into contact with food. So if you think about, these are labeled as not dinnerware safe because they're chemical durability. So being exposed to highly acidic foods repeatedly or for periods of time are going to start degrading the fired and finished surface. So if you put it somewhere that doesn't come into contact with acidic foods or long exposure to anything like that, then you are good to go. So here I applied the the rainforest on this bottom part of the piece. The right here, nobody, no food should be touching anything down here. Like my lips are going to be onto contact up here. So I wouldn't be worried about the glaze degrading here, just leaving it to the bottom two thirds of the piece. So here I have the overlap of the combo here, but up here I've just got sandstone and then I did lab, did a rainforest over top of it there. And here I want to do the contrast of the flat and uh, vertical so you can kind of see how much it changes. These glazes when they're flat they really just pool on the top because they're so mobile so you're not going to really see a lot of the performance but you can kind of see how the colors will be produced here. So here I could kind of see that I'm getting some brown and I know that the rainforest and the sandstone are going to add mobility on a vertical surface, so I did anticipate that by receiving the coats at the bottom and leaving a nice area for, for any glaze movement to happen. And next I have a combo that I was actually pretty surprised with the results with. So this was what I was looking at, so that we do all of our tests on flat pieces first just because it's nice and quick, and then we'll move over to combo cups or vertical tiles to showcase it there. So here we have that and then this is it on a vertical surface. So the because this glaze is so mobile you're not getting that cloudy buildup on the matte black. So as you can see it just all of it just kind of moved down which is kind of cool it creates a nice line here but you're not seeing much of an interaction in this area which is totally fine. I, I dig it. I think it's pretty cool. This one I anticipated the mobility, receded the coats. Here we've got that nice glob there. I love when this pools with that gloss and the root heel. Really nice. And you can kind of see where I did do the combo here. This glaze is really, or this bisque form is really, really nice for these kinds of things because we have that nice like half inch or inch wide lip that you know, like if you glaze under that, you're pretty good. So again, this is Himalayan salt over black mat. We have our flat and vertical. All right, I have one more uh, mug to show you and then we can talk about our low fire glazes layering with cone six glazes and then I'll be wrapping it up today. So thanks again for taking the time to tune in today. I know it's kind of a long haul, so really appreciate all of your guys' time here. So here we have, what do we have? Uh, Azurite over Olive Float. So this one's really cool, and I really hope it translates into the video, but the Olive Float, when you use it in combination, produces this sweet iridescence. Um, it seems like in the video it just reads as being really shiny but it kind of look, looks like it has this oil slick to it. That's why I keep moving it around in hopes that the camera catches up on it. But yeah, so here we have Azure over Olive Float. We did the Olive Float all the way, probably all the way down to here because I knew it was going to move. And then the, the Azure right I only did in this middle area because again, since it's layered with a crystal glaze, I anticipated even more movement, so I really pulled this one up, which I kind of like how this globs around the bottom. Honestly, I think it's kind of cool. But you could do some more testing and really perfect how much that's moving before you 
if you don't like having this bare bottom here. And then here we have our flat version. So this one doesn't look that much different aside from these cool lines here. They're just melting down on the vertical version. Uh, we had someone asking about the matte black glaze. Yes, we used the matte black in that combo. It is a glaze in our stonework glaze line, SW140. That's what we used on this. Okay, so I have some samples using Jungle Gems with our new stonework glazes. They are sweet. All right, here we go. This is Rainforest layered with Herb Garden. Dun, dun, dun. So here we have, you can see how mobile these jungle gems are at cone six, how it melted down into the rainforest and then the rainforest melted down here. So these are things that you might wanna do some nice testing with cause this is kind of a risky thing to do just without doing any testing. This is a really mobile thing because we're over firing our jungle gem. And then this glaze gets really mobile in combination. So this is something that you really, really want to make sure you're doing testing and understand before you sacrifice your kiln shelf. And this is one of our Mako stoneware bisque items. This is the eight inch face. It's great for doing testing like this on. So again, this is Herb Garden. It's one of our jungle gem glazes layered with rainforest. And then second we have cheetah layered with landslide. So this one I tried to choose colors that matched really well and would blend together and I think that they worked really really great actually. This one you can tell how much it moved. You see all that variation that happens from the crystals melting into the glaze and then you get that nice gloss and a really heavy pooling at the bottom so you can really see how mobile this glaze is. So I, I definitely pushed this up anticipating the mobility, but it gathered just perfectly and didn't move. So I was really excited, kind of got lucky on that one. But these ones I did fire on kiln bricks. That's what I always do, or that's what we always do when we're testing combos that we know are going to have a lot of mobility. So uh, one thing to say about jungle gems firing to cone six, um, both our Jungle Gems and our Elements line, they do go to Cone 6 really, really well. We have all of the results posted on our website, but the tiles are not going to showcase the mobility. So when you're firing our Jungle Gems and Elements to Cone 6, there is going to be a lot more mobility with those glazes being, they're just being overfired. So you think about everything that melts at 06, you're firing it way hotter. So everything's gonna really, really melt. So definitely do some testing. You're gonna have a lot of mobility. And then also those two are the most likely to produce uh, different surface textures or uh, crazing. So you can actually see on this one, hopefully you can see it in the video. It's pretty crazed. I think it looks really cool. It looks great on a vase. It's not so deep that you can, or actually, yeah. So I can feel it with my nail. And that's kind of how I judge how severe something's crazed. So if it's crazed to the up to the top surface to the point I can catch my nail on it, that's not something that I really want to be exposed to something that's being used a lot or food surfaces or something like that. So again, this is cheetah layered with landslide fired to cone six. It's one of our jungle gem glazes layered with a stonework glaze. And then finally, I have our peacock eyes layered with uh, azurite. So this one really moved. The whole thing is glossy. Looks gorgeous. So nice. And then this melts into the surface. This is one that I really can't tell if it's crazed because it's kind of an opaque glaze. These transparent glazes are really easy to tell whether the surface is crazed or not. On this one, I'm not really sure. I don't think it is. It doesn't feel like it. It feels pretty solid, so I would say that's not crazy. So definitely do some testing. Always do testing if you're going to be using anything on dinnerware, really, because all of your results could be different than our results. There's a lot of variables that come into play when you 
our firing glazes and applying them and using clay bodies and stuff like that. So you can always expect some variation, which is why we always recommend to do testing. And finally here, I just wanted to touch on, so I touched about the jungle gems and elements at cone six. Also our stroking coats and foundations are good to use at that temperature as well. The they don't move necessarily, but we don't really recommend them for crisp details or something like that. A lot of the time, especially if you're layering them, the lines will blur a little bit and you're going to lose details if you're doing like a really pretty painting or something. But if you're doing like, like blotches or sections of color, that's good to go. They add a lot of beautiful, vibrant colors, gives you a lot of choices. So it's really, really a great thing. I love layering them with other stonework glazes to add pops of color popping through. There's all sorts of possibilities. So that kind of touches on our 06 glazes at cone six. Um, I'm gonna go through, check for some more questions and then I'll kind of wrap this up. So while I'm going through, if you guys have any other questions, please drop them in the comments. We're kind of coming to the end and I wanna make sure to answer everyone here if I can. Thanks so much for the kind words about these vases. I totally agree. I think they're super cool. The 12 new glazes mixed up yesterday. I'm ready to try in my wood and gas count. Oh yeah, sweet. Definitely tag us in that. I would love to see the results. We don't have a wood kiln here, so I love seeing our customer work in different firing environments. We just have our cone 10 reduction, so I feel like there's something special about using them in, in a wood kiln see where the jungle gems and the new stonework glazes both started at the top of the vase that's a great question thank you so much for asking that so this so basically I applied the uh, stonework glaze first so I did I basically started it like just past the shoulder um, allowing this to kind of blend in it's kind of hard to tell because this is so mobile there's not like a line where I started this might be a better showcase of it but it's kind of like on this tip of the shoulder so I did one coat and then the second coat I brought up to here, and then the third coat is only on this, this top section here. Again, I anticipated a lot of mobility, so I did three coats of that glaze, really dramatic receding of the coats, and then I did two coats of the jungle gems. So, and I made sure they overlapped just a smidge here, but I knew that they were gonna blend together because they're so mobile. So I did two coats down to this shoulder here, and then they kind of took it the rest of the way with that glaze slip and slide. So thanks for asking that. That was a great question. Is it okay to use ones not recommended for dinnerware on the outsides of cups and mugs, etc.? Yes. So basically, as I kind of showcased on these samples here, just keep in, just kind of just like be really thoughtful about the way you're using these glazes. So the reason we say they're not recommended for dinnerware is because the surface is not chemically durable when it's exposed to highly acidic foods or exposed to acidic foods for a period of time. So if I have this on this area here, this is not being exposed to highly acidic foods. This is not being exposed to hopefully any foods really. We would recommend hand washing them, you know, just keeping that glazed surface nice and safe, but you're not ingesting anything that's coming into contact right here. Acidic food and stuff is not coming into contact with this bottom part here, just keep in mind where your mouth is going to be. So you definitely want to keep it below that. But yeah, that's kind of like this gray area that you can kind of weasel your way around. So we really want to make sure you have an understanding of the way our products work and it's up to you to know how to use them with your process. So understanding why we're recommending something to not be used for dinnerware, such as surface texture or surface durability are really important factors to keep in mind because if you know why something is not recommended for dinnerware, then you can make it work in your studio environment. So yes, thanks for asking that. Um, what cone did you fire the vases? The vases are all fired to cone six. So most of the samples that we're showcasing here, white stoneware body fired to cone six, aside from these cone 10 reduction results that I went over. Um, if you guys, that is just for those four new colors. Yes, so the four new colors, those are not dinner, we're safe because of the chemical durability, as well as 
are mirror black, satin patina, antique brass. Those are also not having a chemical durable surface. And then alternatively, we have our textured surfaces and that's a reason to denote something not dinner or safe as well. So our magma glazes, our crackle glazes, and our mud crack glazes would fall under the texture category. All right, that's hi from Brazil and the UK. Hello, thanks so much for tuning in. All right, and so now we'll just talk about a couple of our resources and then we'll just wrap this guy up. So, so resources that we have a bit available for you is our website, first of all. Our website, we just spent over lots of time uh, redesigning our website to make it more user-friendly. We know our last website was a disaster to navigate, so we're hoping that this is a little bit easier for you. We updated our search feature for the website in general, and not only that, but we made searchable pages on our website as well. So we have a searchable glaze combo gallery. Our glaze combo gallery, you can select which glaze you have, and it'll show you all the combinations that we've submitted with those glazes. And in that glaze combo gallery, we also have the printable PDFs of all of our monthly glaze combination sheets. So we have 12 combos at cone 6 and 12 combos at cone 10 on printable PDFs so that you can print them and hang them in your studio, maybe make a little flip book with it, or just use them as inspiration to do some testing on your own. And then our distributor page is also searchable, as well as our project gallery. So you can put in what country you live in in our distributor page, or click on the map. That'll showcase you distributors in your area. And then we have a searchable project gallery, which is very, very full of a variety of projects, low fire, mid range, high fire. And then on, on that page, there is a link to archived projects. So if there's a project that you don't find on it that you've searched for previously. We have those archived for our old website so that nobody loses anything there. And then we also have all of our product brochures and literature available on our website. So if you click the resources tab, that will list the product brochures and literature as well as information about food and dinnerware safety. So kind of talking about the distinguishing factors between those as well as like what we do. We have a health and safety page talking about what we do to make sure our glazes are safe for you guys to be using. And then finally, our social media is an amazing resource. Uh, obviously, you guys are all connected with us on Instagram already, but we do have a Facebook page, Mako Mudroom, and then we do have a Facebook group, Mako Mudroom Society. So our Mako Mudroom Society is an amazing resource for all of our all of our fellow potters out there. It's basically just somewhere where everybody that uses our products can discuss our products. It showcases it. People will showcase the way that you, they're using them in their studio. So you have all sorts of different clay bodies, all sorts of different applications, all sorts of different firing environments. That page actually does have a search feature on it as well. So if you're looking for a specific clay body or glaze or something like that, you can just pop in the search feature and it'll show you all the posts that have that in it, which is an amazing resource because it's not just what we're feeding out to you, it really shows you them being used out in the world and not just by the handful of designers that we have in-house. So it's a really, really nice resource to have. And then finally, our YouTube channel, it's Mako Colors. Our YouTube channel is full of project tutorials, glaze profiles. We just started doing these glaze profiles, so it seems like everybody likes them. I love doing them. So we're hoping to build up a nice gallery of glaze profiles so that if you have a glaze and you're debating about buying it, you can just click that, know everything you need to know about that glaze and the performance of it. Um, so that hopefully will build as a really nice resource for you guys on our YouTube channel. And then we do our Facebook Live product education series as well as any other pre-recorded education there. So our YouTube channel, we've just kind of started breathing a lot more life into it this past year via COVID digital times. So I, I'm really happy that that's available for you guys. So definitely check that out. Give us a follow on that so you can get updates whenever we post new videos. So we're working on posting more videos. I'll do one last scroll for questions, guys. So if you have any, just throw them at me. 
And then after that, I'm just going to sign off here. So I had so much fun uh, talking to you guys today. Oh, you guys are so nice. <laughs> Uh, well, they also show specific gravity. Um, I'm not sure what will show specific gravity. We do have a recommended specific gravity range of 1.47 to 1.51. That's kind of what we recommend. Um, and that's recommended to do a single dip. So if you do one really, really quick dip, that's the range that we recommend for. Um, so that does kind of fall on the thicker side of dipping glazes. So if you do have problems with pin holes coming through or the glaze crawling or peeling off of the piece, that's usually due to it being too thick. So either do a quicker dip or you might want to add some more liquids to the glaze so that it's the correct consistency for your personal practice. So we put it a bit on the thick side for a quick dip. But if you're used to doing something else or you're layering glazes, you might want to thin it out a little bit more than that. So just so you know, specific gravity range that we recommend is 1.47 to 1.51. All right, everyone is being so nice. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in today. We have a recommendation for high school lesson plans. We actually do have... Um, some of those available so I will get into contact with you. Um, we have another page that's kind of or another group that's geared towards our teachers more so I would definitely love to send you guys some information for that. And is the matte black glaze not dinnerware safe? Uh, nope the matte black, black bleh, the matte black glaze is dinnerware safe. The only glazes that we do not recommend for dinnerware are the ones that I had mentioned previously which includes our texture glaze line, as well as we have seven glazes in our regular glaze line that does not recommend it for dinnerware. But matte black glaze is good to go. All right, so it looks like that's all the questions that we have today. So if anybody has additional questions, feel free to comment. I'm not sure if I can post this in our IGTV. I know it got really, really long, so Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in today, guys. Again, we have our stoneware sample packs available by the end of next week, and our brushable pints and dry glazes will be available at the beginning of April. So thanks so much for helping us get hyped about these new glazes, and everybody take care. Man, I don't know how to turn this off.